it's here, one of the most hyped phones of 2023. But where do I begin? There's a lot I want to say about the Nothing Phone 2. A lot of leads that I could go with. I could start with the fact that the phone is only $599. The fact that it looks so good that it was designed so thoughtfully. Or maybe I should just spoil the entire video and let you know that I really, really like it. The Nothing Phone 2 represents almost everything an Android phone should be, and I think it's a phone that everyone should consider. Okay, I think I've already spoiled the video, but please keep watching. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker, and over the last decade, I've made it my job to show people around the world that tech can be easy, fun, and exciting. On this channel, I give you special access to the products I review, the events I attend, and all the interesting people I get to meet along the way. So if you want to learn about exciting Android phones, give this channel a like and subscribe, and I'll help you find the right gadget to match your needs. This is my Nothing Phone 2 review. Let's get straight to it. This is the Nothing Phone 2. My review device is a new color, dark gray, which replaces last year's black. The phone is also still available in white, but I'm loving this new color. Lighter colors hide smudges better, and compared to the old black model, you can better see the details underneath the transparent back glass that's now becoming synonymous with the brand. If you look closely, the textures are more visible too, thanks to a new compression molding technique. If you ask me, I prefer the gray model because it provides a better contrast against the glyph lights, which are already white. The changes are subtle, but very effective. Nothing smartly stuck to its original design, reinforcing its soon-to-be iconic brand identity. The phone is taller and wider, and its glyph interface gets additional functionality. There's a full chapter on the glyph lights later. From the moment I picked up the Nothing Phone 2, I knew I liked it. It just feels so good in my hands. Despite its aluminum frame, its back is ever so slightly curved just around its edges. Nothing describes it as pillowy, and I sort of agree. This small tweak makes it so much more comfortable to hold, more than say last year's model, or dare I say, an iPhone. Speaking of, it has to be said that its similarities to the iPhone are hard to overlook. Every single person which I've shown the phone to has said, it looks like an iPhone. Maybe because of its overall shape and camera layout. That said, I very much prefer how the Nothing Phone 2 looks and feels. And because of how it's made me feel, I've wanted to get to know it more. Before we continue, here's a brief message from this video's sponsor, the Soundcore Liberty 4NC. These are Soundcore's latest earbuds, equipped with an in-ear sound sensor, low distortion driver, and noise isolation chamber. The Liberty 4NC can reduce noise by up to 98.5%. It's also got Soundcore's adaptive ANC 2.0, which tailors noise cancellation based on your ear canal shape and the current environment you're in. So for example, when I'm taking a ride on the subway, where trains are rumbling and screeching most of the time, noise reduction will be higher compared to say, when I'm in the supermarket. That way I can get in the zone of whatever it is that I'm listening to, whether it's an audiobook or The Legend of Zelda TOTK. Audio is crisp, clear, and more detailed. On a single charge, the Liberty 4 NC can last up to 10 hours of playback, but with the charging case can last you up to 50 hours. Based on how I use them, I can pretty much forget about charging the Liberty 4 NC for more than two weeks. And because it supports wireless charging, it's easy to just plop them down on a wireless charger before bed. It also supports fast wired charging, so I can get an extra four hours of playback with just a 10 minute top up. If you want Soundcore's strongest noise canceling earbuds to date, the Liberty 4 NC starts at $99.99 and it comes in five different colors, including this one, black and light blue. I'll put all the links in the description box below. By 
the way, apart from testing out the Nothing Ear 2 earlier this year, the Phone 2 is my first foray into Nothing's universe. I never used the Nothing Phone 1, but you'll see it in this video because I bought one so I could show you some basic comparisons and also what's different. Think of this video as a fresh take from a first time user, maybe even more specifically, an iPhone user. That comparison to Apple is one you'll hear many times in this video. And I don't mean in a copycat kind of way, but one with more reverence. Apple has always been known for thoughtful design, evoking feelings from intangibles. And that seems to be Nothing's approach also. From the moment you open the box, the tactile feel of ripping it open, which I didn't do a very good job of, unfortunately. And the textures embossed on the inner white box. Inside, there's an Apple-esque design by Nothing info packet, but what I love the most is the transparency on the SIM card ejector tool, the ends of the USB-C cable, even the optional charging brick has the same vibe. In the similar vein, the same kind of X-ray vibes you get from the phone, you also get from the Nothing Ear 2 buds. Each device or accessory is so thoughtful, so beautiful, that it's evoked an emotional response, so much so that I just want to keep using it. From the subtle curves on its back to the phone's symmetrical borders, I believe these are details that we might not notice, but the company spent a lot of time painting over. Nothing's approach too is that technology should enable you, but not suck you in. So Nothing OS 2.0 intentionally strips apps of their color. So for example, when you pick up the phone to quickly reply to an email, you don't end up spending an hour scrolling through TikTok. In the few weeks that I test drove this phone, I found this monochrome strategy to be effective. I was on my phone less and more in tune with the real world. But if you want some color back, you can easily switch that back too. Some may think it's a gimmick, but the folks at Nothing believe that the lights on the back of the phone, called the Glyph interface, are designed with a purpose. When fully lit up, you'll find that there are now 11 LED strips instead of five, with individual strips doing different things. If this diagonal line on the upper right hand side lights up, it means you have an important notification. The curved line underneath serves as a status bar and the exclamation point on the bottom lights up when charging. There's also a red light here that turns on when you're filming a video. I love the way notifications work. Apart from the customizable flashing lights that indicate a phone call, on the Nothing Phone 2, Nothing introduced essential notifications, which you can assign to an app or a specific contact. Think about it this way. You're hanging out with a friend and because you want to be in the moment, you put away your phone face down but maybe you're expecting an important text from your boss to give you the green light about a project that you're working on. You can set your boss as an essential notification, and then when he or she texts, this light will turn on and stay on until you attend to it. The progress bar is pretty cool too and has a lot of uses. You can have it virtually display volume when you're adjusting it, volume up, volume down. You can also set a glyph timer and see the lights fade as time runs out, like a progress bar. Nothing is also opening this up to third-party developers. It's currently working with Uber and Zomato, so you can easily track the arrival of your driver or your delivery guy. Pretty hungry myself. So, what's it like to use this phone. Nothing made a major shift this year. Where the original Nothing Phone 1 was a mid-ranger, the Nothing Phone 2 is what we call in the tech space a flagship phone. And my experience was everything one might expect. 
Thanks to its high-end chip, games run fast, multiple apps didn't cause any hiccups. Its display panel is the new kind that can switch from low power when static to buttery smooth when you're scrolling or playing games. And it's sufficiently bright even on a sunny day. Its cameras are good and it has a long-lasting battery and fast charging. In short, it's a great phone, but many phones are. So what sets nothing apart? Well, first and foremost, they're offering a phone with a significantly lower price tag than what's currently out there. But what I think sets this phone apart is the experience that it offers. The Nothing Phone 2 has two cameras. A main shooter has a 50 megapixel sensor with an f1.8 lens. The sensor is Sony's IMX890, while the ultra wide camera features Samsung's JN1 50 megapixel sensor with an f2.2 aperture. The main camera is an upgrade from last year's model, but how does that look in real life? Here are some side by side comparisons between the Nothing Phone 1 and the Phone 2. And here are some photos I shot around New York and Paris. I won't let you go oh. I ask nothing phone fans what they'd like to see in this new update and here's what they told me among other things, they wanted better battery life. Well, your prayers are answered. The Nothing Phone 2 comes with a 4,700 milliamp hour battery, which in my time with the phone lasted an impressive day and a half with normal use. The phone does not ship with a charger in the box, but it supports 45 watt fast charging. So for the Gadget Match charge test, I purchased the Nothing Power 45 watt charger. A 10 minute charge powered the phone up to 25%. It went up to 73% after 30 minutes and a full charge took exactly 55 minutes, just like nothing promised. The phone also supports 15 watt wireless charging and five watt reverse wireless charging in case you need to top up your nothing ear too. Speaking of, I love using these earbuds. They're so good. They look good, they're comfortable to use, and my favorite feature is called dual connection. So I can have it connected to both my Mac and my nothing phone at the same time. And so I could be listening to music while working on my Mac, and if I receive a phone call, can easily switch to my nothing phone. Just like an Apple product, they're easy to pair and they work together seamlessly. So is the Nothing Phone 2 your gadget match? While we can be nitpicky and have really high expectations, it's very hard to build a great smartphone when you don't have the backing or the resources of a large company. And Nothing is the little engine that could. 
and on its second iteration, has managed to build something special. A well-priced phone that delivers on all the right things. Nothing says that their goal is to build something fun. And while I'm not sure if this phone is fun enough, I think it's a great phone that deserves the Gadget Match seal. Of approval. Sure, there are phones with better cameras, faster charging, more insane specs. I want to end with a message that I sent to some of my tech journalist friends. I said, I'm an Apple user, and as an Apple user, it's the experience that's kept me so loyal. And that same holistic experience, whether that be filled with intangibles or something that's fueled by just emotion and hard to quantify. And on Android, it's always been about the specs. It's never been about design. It's never been about emotion. And I think for the first time ever on an Android phone, I'm getting all of that. And that's why I love the Nothing phone. Too, and I hope you will like it also. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, you know the drill, folks. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff and for news and updates, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.